All right. Perusing through some articles, I find five key signs your finances are tr in trouble on Yahoo Finance. And I thought, let's go through this and see what's going on here. And not just signs, because like, I don't know, is that really helpful? Like, don't you kind of know your finances are in trouble? But we'll go into maybe some strategy to overcome if your finances are in trouble. It says, if you feel like there's never enough money in your bank account, you're not alone. According to a survey conducted by Lending Club Corporation, 64% uh, of adults in America report living paycheck to paycheck in March of 2022. I, I assume, by the way, that this can only be more complicated and difficult ever since inflation has skyrocketed, right? It says millions of people are unable to get ahead or put money aside for savings, meaning that there may be, they may be struggling financially. So first off, let's just take a consideration. Like, what if you became more efficient with your finances? There's four main ways to do that. Save on tax especially if you're getting a refund. If you're not a business owner, you can change your exemptions and not give the government a tax-free loan. If you're a business owner, there's a myriad of things and you can follow other videos that we have on this. And actually, if you click in the description, you're going to find we have this awesome like six, seven, eight tips of quickly putting cash in your pocket. So grab that because that's some of the easiest things you could do and see an improvement in the next 30 days. Second thing is save on interest. That's been harder and harder as interest rates continue to increase, but there is a possibility there. The third is investments. If you do have investments, there might be, you know, interest that you're earning you know, less than what you're paying in interest, paying that off could free up cash flow, be a guaranteed savings. It could be that there's hidden fees or commissions that you could remove. That's another piece with the investment side. And then finally, insurance. There's a lot of duplicate coverages and improper structure and simply by changing deductibles and having like multi-policy discounts and a couple things like that can make a big difference. So let's go back to the article. When you're in the middle of it, however, it can be challenging to determine just how dire your financial situation is. <laughs> you may have become numb to the fact that you routinely pay bills late or swimming on in overdraft fees, many people simply have no other choice, given that wages have not kept with the pace of cost of living, as I just mentioned. But recognizing that your bank account is not healthy is half the battle. So here's five key signs your finances are in trouble. Number one, you're late or missed monthly payments. I thought that this article just said, hey, you know, uh, that was like something that that we all kind of know, but now they were going to give us new stuff, but they didn't give us new stuff. So one of the most telling signs that you may be spending more than you make is you regularly miss payments or even you have to pay them past the due date. Why, why is this even a, a part of the article? This seems pretty obvious. If you can't make payments on time, your credit score will be negatively impacted. And by the way, if your credit score is negatively impacted, then maybe your car and homeowner's insurance rates can go up or if you have to go get a new policy. It actually impacts that. Or obviously your interest rates can be impacted. So it says as that score drops, you get less favorable lending terms, making it more expensive to buy a car or home. And in some cases, you may not qualify at all. If you find yourself missing due dates. You need to evaluate your spending habits. Start by writing down all of your income and expenses. See if there are ways you can cut back to ensure that you pay your monthly bills on time and set up automatic payments on your bills um, so they're on a timely matter. Well, if the money's not in the account, that doesn't really work. So let's first look at this. There's four different things I want you to take into consideration with expenses. Number one, destructive expenses, eliminate those. Money that you're paying every single month, but not getting any benefit for. You know, borrowing to consume, that becomes a destructive expense. Things that are your vices that take you beyond what your current means are there, like able to handle, that's another destructive expense. Is there anything that you're not getting benefit for that you're spending money on, number one? Number two, lifestyle expenses. Can you get to a place where you're only paying cash for lifestyle expenses? Again, go to that quick tips guide to find money because that's going to be really important. But like, you know, ultimately... Are you in a place where you could be a little bit more conscious about your spending? What I call mindful cash management that we're doing here. If you can automatically, you know, put some money aside first so you have some savings and we can find that cash to get there, that would be kind of critical so that you're not living as much paycheck to paycheck since almost two thirds of Americans are doing that. So the, the lifestyle expenses, just if you can pay cash for those, do that. The third is protective expenses. This is everything from insurances to, you know, having enough liquidity to asset protection and estate planning. If you're living paycheck to paycheck, that might not be the highest priority, even though maybe it, it should be long term. So like, you know, that's that's the thing is like, how do you build up enough liquidity and safety and savings so you can handle some of these things? And then fourth is productive expenses. These are the ones you don't want to cut back on. Where can you invest in yourself, increase your skill set, you know, be able to add more value, serve problems for people and then have money follow that value that you create. So it's about growing yourself and growing your income. 
That's a big part of this. It's not just the money habits that you have. It's the habits that you have personally that I had to make more money. And so I really want you to focus on that. So these four types of expenses are really critical. And then these ways for you to be more efficient on saving tax, interest, you know, investment fees, and then insurance costs. Now, says you live paycheck to paycheck. If one, if you're one of the 166 million that live paycheck to paycheck, you may be in more financial trouble than you realize. Living paycheck to paycheck is not only stressful, it's not really sustainable. One emergency, such as a car wreck or job loss, could spell financial ruin. Um, to get out of that habit, determine if you're living paycheck to paycheck because you spend beyond your means, or is that that you truly cannot afford even a modest lifestyle? You spend a lot of money on nonsensical, non-essentials. I almost said nonsensicals, non-essentials. Then you should be able to cut back and put money into savings. We talked about the four types of expenses. If your paycheck strictly goes towards the basics, you you might need to consider reallocating to less expensive area or taking on a side hustle. Yeah, the side hustle, you know, some type of side hustle could be one thing um, that could definitely help so that you could earn more money to handle these kind of things. L moving to a less expensive area kind of depends, like what's the cost of moving and the time that it takes to move. So is there a way that you could expand your means, that you could make more money? That's the question. How do you add more value? Where could you make more money? That side hustle, so many people have one. And maybe it's time to, you know, grow something that's more substantial that you can transition to and transfer to over time. But that's another piece. It says you don't have an emergency fund. Like, okay, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, you can't pay your bills on time. You don't have an emergency fund. Like, how are these even signs? These are these seem a little bit obvious. It says it's a big red flag financially is you don't have an emergency fund. Having savings set aside that isn't tied up in retirement accounts is important. And here's the thing. Maybe if you're in this situation we're talking about, retirement accounts are not the highest priority. Ultimately, living a better lifestyle along the way and investing in yourself so you can make more money might be a much higher priority than retirement way down the road. And maybe it even makes sense to invade retirement plans to build an emergency savings or what I call a peace of mind fund, to pay off high interest rate loans, to not go into the situation where every single time you've got late fees. So maybe part of the problem is you're investing in retirement before you invest in yourself. So it's saying to set up money, uh, set money aside for emergencies. You can end up going into debt or having to borrow funds from friends and family. It's never too late to start saving. Look at what you make, subtract necessary expenses and determine how much. See, everything they're telling you in this article, budget, scrimp, save, sacrifice, delay, they did once say side hustle, so that was one good thing, but it's maybe a retirement plan is part of the issue. Maybe restructuring your loans could be really helpful. Maybe reallocating your funds to pay off high interest rate loans could be helpful. Maybe, you know, delaying your retirement payments to get on track and build up this liquidity could be really critical. Now it says you see a drop in your credit score. That could be a, a problem. Well, maybe it's because you've put too much money on your credit cards. It says if there's 35% of your score is from a single missed or late payment, that could cause it to drop. It is also on your, you know, credit cards, which is the next point it makes in the article, you maxed out your credit card. Well, maxing out that credit card is going to lower your credit score, lower credit score, higher interest payment. It becomes the cycle of that higher interest payment means higher payments and then late fees. So you got to get out of the cycle. So what is it going to take? You know, maybe you do have to invade that retirement plan to get on track so that you like how much return would you have to get in a retirement plan to compensate for late fees? for higher interest rates on everything you do because of low credit scores, for the stress and loss of sleep that's robbing you of your peace of mind and your prosperity and your ability to think productively. You know, like, how could you get out of that cycle? Do you have those types of accounts to start building this? Yes, peace of mind fund and setting money aside critical. Making more money, truly critical. Investing in your skill set so that you can make more money, critical. Finding a financial team that can support you, like the guide that I'm giving you here that's complimentary as you watch this video on YouTube, so that you can put more money in your pocket without just having to cut back. That's key. So the last piece on here was maybe you've maxed out your credit card. You know, it's saying not only could this hurt your credit score, which we've already mentioned, but it, it leads to insurmountable debt. And it's saying minimum payments on high interest rates means it might take years to pay off. So like, again, what are you doing with your money? Mindful cash management, the four types of expenses, destructive, consumptive, or lifestyle, protective and productive, increase productive, and manage the others and eliminate, eliminate the destructive. Pay yourself first automatically, but invest in yourself so that you can make more money. It did say side hustle. That could be a good idea. It also means getting basic financial wherewithal, intelligence, and information so you can implement it into your life and improve what you're up to. 
if you go to garrettgunderson.com forward slash offer, you can have my What Would the Rockefellers Do book, which absolutely is the most basic thing that anyone can start today, even though the Rockefellers have some amassed a huge amount of wealth. Some of the basics in there will absolutely change the game. So you're not just thinking about scrimping and reducing, but where you could save that money, where you can kind of get ahead and where you can get out of this cycle, right? So investing in yourself, making more money, getting out of the cycle might mean delaying retirement plans temporarily or even invading them so that you can overcome what you're paying in late fees, what you're paying in high interest rates, what you're, you know, losing in sleep, like get out of this cycle. That's my advice on this. So if you enjoyed this article or this me kind of going through this article in this video, so you can look a little bit beyond just the basics that are there and start to discern truth from falsehood and empower yourself to become more financially intelligent and be able to navigate the chaos of the financial world and take back control of your money. If you like this video and want to see more, we'll go ahead and click through and Feel free to comment because I always like to respond. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And if you're enjoying these videos, well, there's good news. More where that came from. So go ahead and click through and watch the next video now.